Welcome to the Jazz Piano School Podcast, episode number 232. Welcome to the Jazz Piano School Podcast. Learn jazz piano without all the guesswork. Now, your host, Brendan Lowe. Welcome to the Jazz Piano School Podcast, where we have one mission, that is to help you achieve jazz piano freedom so that you can express your true inner soul and emotions instead of having to copy what others have shown you. Now, we do this by providing structured and organized jazz piano education on specific jazz piano tools that you can then take and use over any tune so that you have complete jazz piano freedom. All right, welcome to the Jazz Piano School Podcast, episode number 232. My name is Brendan Lowe. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, this episode is going to be a little bit about reflection and playing music outside your house and just kind of creating the art, any art, whether it's music or things in life, um, for an audience or just outside in the public rather than, rather than performing in your home. And just to give you guys a couple updates too. So I started a new band recently and um, I shouldn't say new band. Well, yeah, it's a new band, but I <laughs> I wasn't, I, you know, jazz is a funny thing because you can kind of lead bands in various gigs and things like that. Um, or you can kind of have a band that always plays together. So, you know, I lead a lot of different bands in various um, iterations and formats, but I've never really kind of led a band band, a group um, of all the same people consistently. And funny enough, this is not a jazz band. This is not a jazz band. But it does contain jazz roots, jazz jazz writing inside of it, just because a lot of us, a lot of the members are, um, you know, obviously experienced in the style of jazz. Obviously me, some of the other members too are fantastic jazz players. But the band is more about writing music that's just inspiring to us. You know, it, we didn't really want to have a genre for the band. We just wanted to write amazing, inspirational, hopeful, loving music for the world and deliver really important messages um, of hope and truth, love, joy, things like that, and just really kind of inspire people and move people as much as possible. This came out of quarantine. And so essentially, uh, a lot of my good friends, a lot of my musician friends that I play with a lot here um, where I live, we... You know, throughout quarantine, I was just like everyone. We were kind of soul searching and digging and doing a lot of reflecting. And it was a hard time. It was a hard time for a lot of people, for everybody, right? And I think we found a lot of things inside of us. Everyone found something inside of us that we'll never forget. We're going to carry with us forever. And one of the things that came up for me was just sharing more music with the world. And I really wanted to do that much, much more than I have been. Obviously, I focus a lot on jazz piano school and I focus a lot on helping others learn jazz piano. But, you know, I play gigs a lot as a side man. And, you know, if I get called for a gig, I'll play a gig. And I get calls a lot, obviously, for a lot of different things. And um, I love playing gigs, but I never really set the intention of writing music myself and set the intention of curating concerts out and about and in the world, right? To deliver a message and deliver music of importance to the world, deliver art and put my own art out there as well as the members, you know, of the group that I'm starting. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. I got inspired to just really put more music out there for people to just feel good, right? And, and to be moved and to experience something um, within themselves, right? To, to awaken your soul to new things and feelings and emotions and thoughts, right? So that's exactly what I've been doing. And you may have noticed uh, some of the followers out there that are consistent fans that I've been a little absent for the past um, four weeks, which is unusual for me because usually we're right on it, my team and I, you know, but I wanted to take just a little breather and I do this from time to time. And this was a, this was a large breather that I had, I took and it felt strange, but it felt good at the same time. And what, what has transpired out of that 
is that I have started this new band and you can go check it out. The band name is called Solo Bell Music. Excuse me, Solo Bell. The band name is called Solo Bell and I'm going to tell a story about the name there. And this isn't just a plug for my my own band, um, but it's going to translate into what I want to talk about later, which is which is delivering your art into the world and, and what comes of that. And so the band name is called Solo Bell. So essentially I like to go on all these experiential trips with my with my fellow musicians and now now all of the members in the group and the most recent trip we took was zip lining all together <laughs> through um, Sonoma in California so we were 300 feet above the ground and we were zip lining and our guide who was an amazing guide really funny really inspiring person I really loved him and he was talking about the trees that we were zip lining through right and a lot of times we kind of think trees always grow straight up, just straight up into there. Obviously, the branches grow out, but the root in the trunk of the tree just grows straight up. And that's kind of just like the stereotype I had in my mind. Now, obviously, I knew that all trees don't grow like that, but I didn't really pay us, pay attention to it. And he's, he told us that there's other types of trees that we're ziplining through called heliotropic trees. Now, heliotropic trees, instead of just growing straight up, they actually grow wherever they need to to go towards the light. So they grow towards light and wherever that brings the tree, that's where it's going to grow. So the band and myself, we were looking, we didn't have a band name yet. This was a couple months ago and we were looking for a band name that wanted that, that revolved around light and bringing light to the world. You know, obviously this is coming out of quarantine. We wanted to deliver love and light and happiness and joy and move people in a positive direction. So we really like this concept and I really like the concept of these trees that move toward the light and we want to help people move towards light and beauty and and love and just inspiration and joy just like I just said. So we first came up with we wanted to combine light and sound. So we first came up with Helio Bell Helio Bell. Now, Helio, again, kind of stemming from heliotropic, meaning going towards the light, in light in general, right? Helios, right? It's kind of referring to sun and light and things like that. And then we have bell, which actually came from decibel, okay, or a bell, ringing a bell. So we had these kind of two concepts, light and sound. And then someone also pointed out, but that bell, right, they they had kind of liked the word bell because it was a play off of the French word bell, right? For beauty. So we had this word helio bell and, you know, we sat with it for a while. And to me, the word helio <clears throat> was a little too sciencey for me. <laughs> like I couldn't, I just couldn't, I just kept thinking of Bill Nye in like a science show, like helio bell, um, helio, heliotropic, right? It's just a very sciencey term kind of. And I just, it just, it just wasn't fitting well with me. So we were on this trip, and again, the purpose of the trip was kind of to get a band name, but also to bond with other musicians and really kind of, we I always kind of bring them on these trips so that we can bond and have some time alone together to write music and, you know, talk and just get away from things. So one night, we slept, obviously, and we woke up, just like we all do, and someone came up, they were thinking about light and what other kind of concepts revolve around light, and they thought of the sun, right? And so... They kind of thought of solar or they thought of the sun, but this person also is, they're not fluent in Spanish, but they're very, you know, they're very cultured and they know a lot of different words and different languages. And they thought of the word soul, which is S-O-L. And this is the Spanish word for sun. Um, Obviously in English, we have solar, um, which is referring to light and things like that. But soul, S-O-L, is the Spanish word for sun. So now we had soul bell soul bell but something still wasn't it it wasn't it was like it felt like two different concepts kind of just meshed together soul bell and again soul was a nice a nice word because obviously it sounds like soul like our own internal soul as well which is a very beautiful thing and someone mentioned um uh soul because they were thinking about soul and when when they said soul they thought of soulfish and they thought of do re mi fa soul La ti do, right? And so when they heard the word soul, they weren't thinking sun or soul, internal soul. They were thinking soul fedge. And then they thought of soul la, right? So they were like, what if we just put soul and la together 
So we had Sol La and then Bell. So we came up with this beautiful band name and I know it takes a while to get there, but once you understand the meeting, it's like, wow, that's a, it's really deep. And I like that a lot. Sola Bell. And it flows off the tongue very easily. It's a very beautiful made up word, which essentially means the beauty of light and sound and, you know, and a lot of other kind of like puns in there as well. You know, internally, we can think about our soul as being light and sound filled with music and everything like that. But anyway, the band has started. We did our first concert um, two weeks, two weekends ago. I'm kind of just emerging from um, all of the things that went into that, you know, um, getting our merch together, getting our uh, social media accounts together. Again, this is a brand new band. We went on a three-day writing retreat. We wrote eight, uh, nine tunes in, a, in, in 48 hours. And that was insane. And it was crazy. And we're now in the recording studio and we're recording all the music as well after the concert. And if you go to solabellmusic.com, obviously you can see me, you can see the band, you can listen to some of the music. Now all the music we just wrote is not up yet. So that, that so the music that you're gonna hear on there is previous music that we've recorded and played. Uh, like the Morning is the only song on there that we was one of the songs that we wrote together collaboratively. I wrote all the chords and the form and the progressions and each member of the band wrote one of the verses and then we kind of all kind of came together and just formulated that as a group but we are now going into the second recording date studio again if you go to instagram you can follow all the pictures of the band and our concert and things like that and seeing us in the, a beautiful recording studio in oakland called 25th street recording which is a great studio if anyone's out in california i highly recommend recording there amazing engineers i'm gonna go i'm gonna go back and record some jazz albums but that's what I've been doing, and it was really nice. So I'm going to transition into the point of all this. First of all, I just wanted to let you know where I've been. Because some people I know, I get emails sometimes like, oh, I haven't heard from you in a while. Like, what's what's happening? Are you guys still releasing content? Like, always. We will always be releasing content. But again, it's always nice to take a step back and be reflective. And I do that for all of my team, my staff members, everybody. Because businesses, you know, they continue to run on autopilot sometimes. And I think it's really, really good to just take some space, just like jazz. Just take some space, think about what you're doing, reflect on everything that's happening in your life and the world, come back to the table and, you know, ask yourself, Am I, do I still enjoy doing what I'm doing? Like, do I still want to do this? And I will always enjoy this. I don't think I ever will, but, but I really do love these breaks and space is great for everybody, right? So I encourage you to do that now. What has transpired from me going out into the world and um, performing music and curating this concert, which sold out so fast to 125 people, and I'm now looking for bigger theaters, is that I just feel like a newfound connection with humanity and people and and music in general in a different way, you know, in a different way than I have just teaching jazz online or teaching students and even performing jazz, you know performing jazz is a is a is a niche in its own thing and, and again we're playing different types of music folk pop rock we're playing just music we've written that we felt inspired to write and all of us kind of helped each other write these tunes so we all have a hand in each in every one of these tunes and to write music and put it out into the world is something that everyone should do and it doesn't have to be much and you don't have to write and I encourage you to just put your art out in the world in some way because I'll never forget the, I, I remember someone said this to me one time that essentially connection or connecting with someone is you putting yourself out there and allowing yourself or another person to connect with you. Now, if you do not put yourself out there, then other people and other things will not be given the opportunity to connect with you. Thus, you will develop no connection. So at some point, you kind of have to open up and put yourself out there just a little bit. It can be a little baby step, right? In the smallest, smallest way. And connect, right? Connect with others and connect with through music. And, and again, that's my point. Connecting through music is an amazing, amazing experience because 
yes, it can be through words, obviously lyrics, but music is a different, is just a different vehicle, right? Um, paintings are a different vehicle. Dance is a different vehicle. I just love all the art forms. It moves me and inspires me and it speaks to me in different ways. And music is an amazing, amazing thing. So I highly encourage you because you're going to gain experience, knowledge, feelings, emotions, just everything that you, you might not have ever experienced if you had not done it. So some of the examples may look like just going out to a jam session, right? Maybe you don't even play, just listen, right? Or, or you know, um, maybe play in a small recital if you have a teacher or something like that. Just play a small tune in a small recital. Play for your partner, play for your kids, play for your family members, pay, play for random people. Go out on the street and just play music, right? And by doing this, you're going to be able to connect with others and really kind of gain just a, a you're going to be able to go deep. You're going to be able to go deeper, much deeper into music and the feeling of connection and what the music is really, really about. Because we can sit in our house, we can practice standards, we can practice improvising, we can learn and all that stuff. And that will never, ever stop or end. It's a continuous journey. And I'll tell you this right now, it never, ever ends. Okay. It, it, it's like nirvana. We're, we're always striving to get there. I mean, the best artists in the world still to this day would still were working on things. Chick Corea, Herbie, Coltrane, you know, Freddie Hubbard, everybody, Miles, like everyone was, it's a pursuit for something that you honestly, you have to kind of come to terms with because you're, you're always going to be a student. And so one of the great things about connecting with others and going out there is that it really kind of erases or not, I shouldn't say erases, but it kind of brings the priority level of like trying to reach this thing down a lot and brings out this other thing that's just so gorgeous and beautiful, which, it, which is just connection through music. And it doesn't matter how good or you know, how long you've been playing or how simple it is, it doesn't matter, you know? I've heard beginners play that I was just so moved by them just sharing their music. It didn't didn't matter how good they were or like what they were playing. It was just the pure art of sharing the music. And that is really, really moving for both parties, the listener and the performer, the artist. And it creates this connection, this bond that is undescribable. It's a feeling that you literally can't get just sitting in your house playing by yourself. So I encourage everyone to go out there and do that. I'm, I feel much more inspired now uh, doing music. I want to pursue more musical goals. A lot of things have come up in my mind, ambitions that I'm going to be pursuing through this adventure that I've kind of taken that kind of transformed and came about through quarantine. So it's a great thing. It's a great thing. And I just want to share that. So I will be getting back to education in the next Jazz Piano School podcast episode. And some of the things that I'm gearing up for right now um, is I'm going to be, I'm currently in the works of refilming all of the course curriculum success path videos. And a lot of those were filmed a long time ago. So I thought it'd be best to refilm them with my updated technology, have a camera on me. You'll be able to see me, um, better sound, better quality, better education, better everything. Right. And I'm going to be refilming all of those videos and I'm going to be releasing those. So if you're a member already of jazz piano school, you'll start to see those hit the success path curriculum. You can get those new videos. We'll send out notifications to you. And, uh, also we're gearing up to release a improvisation course and that will be coming late this year or, definitely in the beginning of January. And so again, there's a lot of amazing things happening. Um, if you're not a member, um, this upcoming, uh, like now is probably the best time. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're going to be right in the thick of things, you know, getting all this new content, getting all these new videos, getting access to the improvisation course that's coming up very, very soon. And of course, like during the holidays and things like that, there's a lot of uh, different fun bonuses and promotions that that happen um, that we release and do. So very very amazing time if you've been kind of sitting in the sitting in the woods or considering signing up for Jazz Piano School and trying it out. Then this is an amazing time to do that. So 
Thank you so much for listening. Again, in the next podcast, we'll be getting back to jazz piano school education and specifically more improv education to kind of gear up for that improvisation course that's going to be coming. I'll be talking more about the concepts and ideas and, and blueprint that I have for teaching improvisation because I love uh, the systematic strategy that I've created that works really, really, really well to teach students improvisation in a systematic and structured manner. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Go outside, play some music, share your music, share some art, and I'll talk to you soon. Happy practicing.